Welcome to this graph theory video. What we'll talk about today is degree sequences and also what makes a sequence graphical. So as usual, let's go to the blackboard. Let's take a look at degree sequences of graphs. Now you know what the degree of a vertex is and here I have a little example and I'm labeling the degrees in purple. Now a degree sequence of this graph could be written down as something like 1, 3, 3, 2, or you might want to write it in a different order like 2, 3, 3, 1, or 1, 2, 3, 3, etc. So let's be a little bit more specific. A sequence d1, d2 up to dn of non-negative integers is called a degree sequence of a graph g if the vertices of g can be labeled v1, v2 up to vn such that the degree of vi is equal to di for all i from 1 to n. So if we take a look at the example we started with, if I was to label the vertices as follows, then I would see that it satisfies the first degree sequence that I wrote down. Given a different labeling, I would be able to see that it satisfies this one or this one as well. We've seen that given a graph G, it is easy to find a degree sequence. But if we're given a sequence of non-negative integers, when is it a degree sequence of some graph? That question is much harder to answer in general. If a sequence S, which is the sequence D1 up to Dn, is a degree sequence of some graph, then the sequence S is called a graphical sequence. Obviously, not every sequence of non-negative integers can be a graphical sequence. For example, the sequence 1, 1, 3 is not graphical because we have three odd degree vertices here and we know that every graph has an even number of odd degree vertices. We've seen this fact in a previous video. Another example of something that's not graphical is the sequence 3, 3. It's not graphical because it only has two vertices, and so in that graph, the maximum degree is 1. So we've discovered some obvious conditions. The sum of the di's from i equals 1 to n must be even. And also, di can be at most n minus 1 for all i equals 1 up till n. This second condition is because if we have n vertices in the graph, then any given vertex can be adjacent to at most all other vertices. Although these conditions are necessary, they are not sufficient. Let's take a look at an example. If we take the sequence 3, 3, 3, 1, we can see that there are four numbers in the sequence, so n equals 4. Also, if you take the sum of the numbers in the sequence, you get 10, and that is even. Also, each number is less than or equal to 3, which is n minus 1. So the sequence satisfies the necessary conditions, the ones that we wrote up top in green, but the sequence is not graphical. We can see that it's not graphical by trying to build it, and we'll see that we run into a problem right away. If I put down four vertices, and I say that I want one of them to have degree 1 and the other three to have degree 3, now I can give an edge to the one that has degree 1, but I'm not ever supposed to give it another edge. But now the one that has degree 3 needs to have two more edges coming from it, and then this other vertex on the bottom, on the bottom right needs to also have degree 3, and that's going to contradict the fact that the vertex on the top left had degree 1. The basic idea here is that any one of these vertices of degree 3 has to be adjacent to all other three vertices, and that will not work out for this vertex of degree 1 because it will end up having to have degree 3 as well. Before we take a look at conditions that are both necessary and sufficient for a sequence to be graphical, we should make the following observation. A graphical sequence may be a degree sequence for more than one graph. Let's take a look at the example 3, 3, 2, 2, 1, 1. Here I'm going to draw two different graphs that both realize this as a, as a degree sequence. And now I'll label the vertices with their degrees so that you can see that the degree sequence is indeed realized. But these two graphs are not isomorphic. If you want a reason to see why they're not isomorphic, take a look at the left graph and you'll see that between any pair of vertices there is a path of length at most 3. Whereas on the right graph, if you take a look at the 2 degree 1 vertices, the path between them actually has 
length 4. So these are two distinct graphs which both realize this degree sequence as one of their degree sequences. That's not a problem when you're looking at a sequence and trying to determine if it's graphical. If you want to show that it's graphical, you just need to show an example of a graph for which it will work. You don't need to try to look for all possibilities. So now for the exciting part, I'll show you a necessary and sufficient condition for a sequence to be graphical. This is a theorem and it was found independently by Havel and Hakimi in the 50s and 60s. So this is referred to as the Havel-Hakimi theorem. A sequence s, d1, d2, up to dn, of non-negative integers, with d1 bigger than or equal to d2, bigger than or equal to, etc., all the way down to dn, and n at least 2, and d1 at least 1, is graphical if and only if the sequence s1, which is equal to d2 minus 1, then d3 minus 1, and keep going until you get to d subscript d1 plus 1. This is with a minus 1. And then from then on, the same terms as normal. So d subscript d1 plus 2, all the way up to dn, is graphical. So if and only if this new sequence is graphical, and notice that the things that have had a 1 subtracted from them, there were d1 terms here. Now upon first glance, this may look very confusing, because this condition that a sequence is graphical if and only if a different sequence is graphical may sound to you like you're answering a problem in terms of another problem of the same type. And that is the case. The difference is that this second sequence, S1, is a smaller sequence. It has only n minus 1 terms. So what you can do is repeatedly apply the theorem and say, well, this sequence will be graphical if and only if this one is. And then you treat this one as the new sequence and you say it's graphical if and only if the next application of this theorem gives you a new sequence which is also graphical. That may sound still a little bit confusing, so what we'll do is work out a couple of examples of how to use this theorem algorithmically, and then in the next video I'll show you a proof of why this is true. Let's first take as an example 3331. We already know it's not going to be graphical because we've seen it before. But this sequence is graphical if and only if the following sequence is graphical. Well, what do we do? We remove the first term, d1, and then we look at the next d1 terms and we subtract 1 from each of them. So what that will look like is 2, 2, 0. So it's graphical if and only if 2, 2, 0 is graphical. Now this sequence is graphical if and only if when we apply the same process we get a graphical sequence. So we remove the first thing, 2, and we subtract 1 from the next two places. We're going to get 1 and minus 1. So the whole sequence is graphical if and only if 1 minus 1 is graphical, but clearly 1 minus 1 is not graphical because minus 1 cannot be the degree of any vertex. Let's take another example. The sequence 3, 3, 3, 2, 2, 1 is graphical if and only if, so let's remove the first biggest number and then we look at the next 3 because that number was a 3 and we subtract 1 from each of them we'll get 2, 2, 1, 2, 1. So our original sequence is graphical if and only if this is graphical. But now let's reorder it before we run the theorem again. The theorem wants them to be in order from biggest to smallest. So we've put it as 2, 2, 2, 1, 1. Now this sequence is graphical if and only if the same application will produce a graphical sequence. So we remove the 2 and we have to subtract 1 from the next two terms. This gives us 1, 1, 1, 1. And again, we can repeat this. We take the first biggest term, that's on the left, this 1, and we have to subtract 1 from the next term. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down what we will get, but with the reordering already. I know this will go to a 0, and then I'll have a 1, 1. So I'll just write this as 1, 1, 0. And finally, we can take a look again at applying the theorem to this sequence. We can remove the 1 on the left, and that means subtracting 1 from the next single element, and we're going to get 0, 0. That means that our original sequence is graphical if and only if 0, 0 is graphical. 
Well, if you ever come to a sequence of zeros at the end, you know that's graphical because you can just draw the empty graph on that number of vertices, in this case two. So clearly our original sequence is graphical based on the theorem. We haven't proved that yet, but using the theorem, that's what we've shown. By the way, if you wanted, you could have stopped a little earlier. Maybe when you saw one, 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 it was obvious to you that that was graphical via this picture. In that case, you could have stopped at this point and said, yes, my original sequence is graphical because I have found a sequence which is graphical upon repeated application of the theorem. So the, the key thing to remember is that if you take your original sequence and you repeatedly apply the theorem and you get to a sequence of all zeros, then absolutely your original sequence was graphical. However, if you take your original sequence and you repeatedly apply the theorem and you ever get to something where you have a sequence there where there are negative numbers, then that sequence was not graphical. So hopefully you can see the utility of this theorem and in the next video I'll show you the proof. Thanks for watching.